like I was always really concerned because there's this idea like you got to have a style, you got to be a thing, you got to be a certain thing. Right. And and I really struggled with that for a long time because I didn't I I never wanted my practice to stop in a place. I like to think of my history as an artist as a series of collections. And I don't know that I'm trying to find my style. I yeah. think this is my style. This is a really dope moment. I'm here with Carolyn Hitt, who I like to consider the, the mayor of Capitol Hill because you have been a fixture on these streets for some years now in a number of ways. Um, and I guess we can start at the very beginning. I got Blue Cone fall of 2015. Okay. And it was sort of thrust upon me Right. as things are sometimes, in that um, Mark Mueller, who's in the space, we all, yep. um, and Love had Mark. been in the space for years, um, used to be a regular at, my, at the restaurant I worked at, Americana. Boom. Right? Mm -hmm. And we had talked art because I used to put up art walk there. Uh-huh. Because that's sort of like, I, I mean, I was doing art, I was just doing it there, yeah. you know, and making it in my house and meeting with my friends in the house. And we had, we had, done, um, a, we had done a Blue Cone project, which wow. is wild. That's so um, wild. Like it was called a Blue Cone because we just put a Blue Cone <laughs> in the parking lot so that the cars wouldn't, while we were spray painting this wall that we weren't <laughs> even supposed to be painting. I mean, the landlord at the time was like, yeah, I guess you can paint it. And I was like, okay, sure, we're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> and it was not, it was, it was not a great mural by any stretch. But again, like I didn't even know, I didn't even know how to use spray cans at the wow. time. We Boom. all sort of like came together, did this video, did a, did a random one week, put up a mural and an art show at Americana. Okay. Right? Yep. But right, up, right after that, um, Mark had come in one day into the restaurant and he was very much in a panic. He was okay. kind of upset. I could tell he was distraught. Uh, Pete, who'd had, who had the front studio and was also managing the lease, mm -hmm. um, was leaving. Okay. And another artist was leaving too. He didn't want to take over the lease. Mm. He didn't want to be in charge of bringing artists in. Right. Um, and he didn't want to lose the space. Gotcha. So he was very panicked. And uh, I was like, uh, so what you're telling me is, is that the studio is open, like you need somebody to take over the lease and bring artists in. Right. And I was like, I think I can help you with that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the thing about Blue Cone is I never, like I never wanted it to be a space where artists just come in and have their own little box and don't relate with each other. Sure. You know, like I've always been very collaborative, community interested, like, hey, let's do a bigger project. Mm -hmm. Let's do something that we can all be a part of. Mm -hmm. I think I just, I've always just wanted to make art with other people. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, my first career, I was a, an actor. Yeah. Um, before that, I wanted to be an artist, but I did not want to, I was very, very concerned with the solitude mm. of being a visual artist. Interesting. Um, I think even in my youth, I knew that I was not socially adjusted enough that that would make it worse. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Socially adjusted, that's, like, that's a great way of putting I that. <laughs> I was like, if I just go from this into more of this, right. like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna get anywhere. Right. So right. I joined the theater to, really to like experience that human contact and experience that human, how to, how to relate with people. And that was a really um, incredible profession for that. Yeah. You know, it made me not, like for a long time, I thought maybe I was an extrovert because of it, mm. you know? But it's weird coming back around to the art when I knew that I wanted to do it, I still knew that I didn't want to do it completely alone. Got you. 
right? Gotcha. It was always, because of the theater, there was always more of a production to it. When I came in, again, just kind of being like, I've been a solo artist this whole time, I'm trying to find my way, I'm like, you guys started doing Tuesday Tea. And then it was like, okay, this place has a very, very particular energy. Yeah. That you really couldn't find anywhere else. No. And it was like, you know, every Tuesday night, whether you had materials or not, whether you had a place to stay or not, you right. had somewhere to be. Right. And that's what Blue Cone was for so many people. I don't even remember it starting. I just remember it did. And I think it was sort of my way where it's difficult for me sometimes to go out into go out to spaces because right. of my own anxieties sure. of creating a space that perhaps people would come to. I really wanted to make the most of this opportunity in this space on Capitol Hill when everything else was disappearing. Right. February 2020 was the last was the 24 hour 222 2020. Yeah. And then, and then last Tuesday tea, and then right after, like we had heard about COVID. Yeah. It was kind of getting this sort of like, is it happening? Yeah. Like this is happening? But I don't think we really understood what it was. No. I mean, we had like a hundred people up and through this shit. At all times. Fr from everywhere yeah. that night. Yeah. I know I got sick right after it. Mm. I thought it was because I'd been running ragged. Right. Right. But I definitely had like two days of like, fatigue. Mm. We still didn't really know what COVID was. Right. And then it was March 13th, they shut everything down. Yep. And I was like, oh, I bet I definitely had that. <laughs> uh, the whole first part of the shutdown, mm -hmm. um, I was actually really relieved because mm. I was tired. Yeah. I actually did all right, you know, because it was the first time I really had really was just kind of taking time for just myself. Because mm -hmm. I was forced to. Yeah. And everybody else, I don't know if everybody else was in panics or having, I was fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was fine. Yeah. Um, all the way up until George Floyd. Mm -hmm. And then that shifted the year in a whole different direction, you know? That it did. It was so wild for me, having spent so much time in this building, to see that corner going as fucking crazy as it was. I was like, yo, Blue Cone is right there. Right. Realizing that it was so close to Blue Cone. Like, I'm I'm not much of a, I, I don't do well in the big crowds anyway, so I hadn't really been, I hadn't really been out, but I was definitely following everything and watch it and try being up on the front lines. And I had some videos sent to me. So I was really just kind of like- Keeping an eye on things. Keeping, keeping an eye on things. And there was a night Omari got tear gas, mm -hmm. ran three blocks. You know, there was nobody out. There was nobody helping. There was nobody, there was no water. There was no nothing. It was just, it was, it was devastating, mm -hmm. right? And to know that it was so close to where we are. Mm -hmm. You know, and I live just right down the street also. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, this was all very, very close to yeah, home. Like yeah. it was like, I live like three blocks away. Literally. It's like, well, if this is gonna go, you know, we at least have to, we at least have to have some sort of counteracting of this tear gas. And so then, you know, we kicked off the mutual aid station at Vermilion. Just in my mind, I was like, can we just have like water? Like, how do they, like, like I didn't yeah. know anything else to do. Yeah. I didn't know anything else to do. Yeah. So. So that shifted everything, you know, and that, interestingly enough, brought me to, uh, I called Julie C, mm -hmm. right? Julie, I called Julie C, I called Ju F Future Crystals, and I called Diana, mm -hmm. and within 24 hours, Vermilion was packed, mm. full of relief and supplies. You know, the uprising really just continued to like re emphasize like we are the only ones out here taking care of us, right? Wow. And so that's really out of that forever safe spaces and this idea that we have to, you know, that that mutual aid around like protecting each other from this these these, these rents, these bills. Like how do we how do we survive as a community 
um, and protect the spaces that are already, you know, like existing that might not exist at the end of this if we don't do anything about it. From creating space to prioritizing collaboration to, you know, being a leader in so many different ways for the arts community here in Capitol Hill and here in Seattle. You know, you've also, throughout all of this time, maintained your own practice. And I, I think I can, I can speak to, you know, just kind of seeing how it's evolved over the years, how you've gone from, you know, certain characters to mm -hmm. different forms to, you know, the pottery to the painting mm -hmm. to this type of cardboard canvas versus right. actual canvas to wood and all the things. So like, can you speak to a little bit just like your process and just sort of like what drives your desire with regard to any given style that you're sort of practicing? What do you think? Start by saying that I pretty much failed every art class I ever took. Mm. Um, and it wasn't until later in my life that I realized, you know, like there's this ADHD, we're dealing with, you know, like certain things I'm not interested in, right? right? Um, but I'm, I'm a very, I've always made art mm -hmm. my whole life. Yeah. Even when I was acting, I made art, I made things, I made jewelry, I made bags. I've always, always, always made things. Like there's not a point. The, the points in my life where I was maybe the most miserable or, or depressed or like feeling unfulfilled were all of the points where I was not creating. Mm. Um, and uh, I've really always created for how I think I can share it. You know, I've ha I have a lot of patrons or people that have followed my work or, or supported me over the years and they've watched me go through a lot of different things and I think that just sort of speaks to my own um, emotionality, really. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm hypersensitive, highly emotional, and I, I have to process things with my hands. I, I did all of these last month, um, and I only made a hundred of these. I started these, mm -hmm. right? Because it came out of, you know, I was, I was looking at the, the evil eye and I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah. I had just come out of a black and white phase. Mm -hmm. Winters tend to be more black and white for me. Right. The, the, the meditation of these circles was unreal mm -hmm. in a way that the black and white paintings were a different kind of unreal. Right. You know, it processed a different kind of thinking about community and relationship. You know, a lot of my work is about relationship. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's to like this plane, the next plane, each other, everybody, nobody. Right. You know, what are those relationships? What's that relationship of solitude to a whole world? Right. Right? How yeah. do we exist in that? I need an exploration of color that, that is that, where the action is simple you know, black line work or heavy line work, and that's like, those are the stories, mm -hmm. right? But I didn't want to think about the stories. I wanted to like really dive into the feelings of the colors. Sure. And I feel them, like I feel them, like I have, like I can disappear into colors. Mm -hmm. And, but I needed some sort of action, some sort of painting that I could duplicate over and over and over again, where I wouldn't have to think about the shape. And it was just, and the colors would come, and I had to like constantly, I'm like, I, like none of the combinations were selected. It was all based on like what the colors felt like. I had, I had troubles, like I had to challenge myself to use reds and oranges, because I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. And then I had to look at what those, what those chakras were, what that, what that red and orange means. Mm -hmm. Why am I in resistance to this? Because right. I needed to, I needed to deal with that. Yeah. And there was, there's a lot around that. Yeah. You know, my style is to just kind of see what happens and go with that. Like what I what I ideally want to am interested in is large scale interactive immersive exhibitions, mm. installations. Mm. Like that's that's what I'd like to get to. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm really like there are a lot of things that I don't do because it's not time. Right. But they're sitting there. They're waiting. Like yeah. they I know like at a, there will be a time when this these little ideas that I've had or like have been working towards and then all things come into play on each other. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like this could weave into another series that you know like yeah. so I don't know that the, I don't I don't know that it will end and I don't know what will happen. Yeah.
Just the opportunity at the space has allowed us to push our creative practice forward to that degree. Absolutely. And that's why it's so important to make sure that this space is available um, to be used by those in our community um, and that it keeps going. Yeah. I'm so humbled, I'm so grateful for our time and, and that we've been able to like sort of bounce off each other and support each other all these years. Like it's really like, that's, that's the relational work that we're talking about, right. you know what I mean? Right. And it's that sort of nurturing without competition mm -hmm. or judgment. It's just like, whatever you gotta do, yeah, like how can I help? Yeah. Like, you know, you know you can call me. Yeah. I'll show up. Definitely. We're good at that's that's the old blue cone the old blue cone motto. Yeah. Show up, don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> like that was the only rules. Just Literally. show up and don't be a dick. You know? You can get you can get a lot done. Those two. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> it's a good motto for life. Yeah, man. So thank you again so thank much, you. Carolyn, for all that you do, for just being an amazing person, an amazing artist, an amazing friend. You know, and a really, really like a awesome example of like community leadership and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. I'm glad we're here. Yeah. I look forward to our whole future. Yeah, man. You I'm know what I more mean? More dope shit. More dope shit. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> and not being a dick. <laughs> That's right. That's right. As best we can. As best we can. Mm -hmm.